I'm recording. Okay, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, this is our first Zoom virtual Coffee with the Principal. And today is Spirit Day, so I have my, my UCLA gear on. Uh, as soon as the family wakes up, I'll take a photo, but uh, the kids are still sleeping. <laughs> and um, just a different schedule these days. Um, so we'll get in our TAF gear. And then tomorrow we have um, Workout Wednesday. And uh, Ms. Lopez, one of our PE teachers, has been doing uh, wake up and work out at 8.15 in the morning. We're thinking of maybe doing a live stream one of these days, um, but we're trying to get that message out that students and staff are welcome to join the wake up and work out. Uh, we'll get more information. I just found out about it yesterday. I'm very excited. And so we'll start getting information out about that. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us today, and I want to thank all of our staff members, uh, the ad administration and coordinator team uh, that's put this together and will be presenting today. I want to take, uh, thank all of the TAF community, the parents, the students, and the teachers and, and, and admin team for the resilience, the dedication, everything that they're doing that they've, to get this off the ground, this virtual world that we're living in. They've done an amazing job and I'm very proud of each and every one of them. I know there's always room to grow, but I've heard a lot of amazing things that, um, that people are doing on all areas to, to support our students. And, um, to, and now we're gonna be shifting into celebrating some of their accomplishments as we get towards the end of the school year. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that too. So I wanna thank, um, thank everyone about, uh, for that. I'm going to go into the presentation and then um, you can use, if you look down here, there is a chat box and you can click on the chat box and you can message our moderator, question moderator. You can send the questions to our question moderator. <clears throat> She'll be looking at them to see if there's similar questions and grouping them together. And then we'll try to answer as many of those questions at the end. Um, but we do have, people have other meetings and classes. So um, we will be keeping this meeting to a one hour meeting. And then um, I'm looking forward to continue to have more meetings, uh, possibly for like the seniors or different groups, and then more coffee with the principals uh, uh, meetings. Uh, let's see. Um, so, uh, the, the people that have their videos on right now are the staff members that are going to be presenting or answering questions for all of you. So that's why some of us have our videos on and uh, for the purpose of recording um, so that we can see, see what's going on. Okay, um, so I'm going to get into the presentation and I'm going to share my screen. Um, Okay, so welcome, and I kind of already talked about the Zoom meeting norms right here. Uh, and I already talked about that it's Spirit Week, today's College Day, okay, Workout Wednesday. Um, the bell schedule, I kind of want to go over the bell schedule real quick. This is on the Taft website. The reason we kind of went to this modified block bell schedule uh, is to avoid conflict. So we had some conflict in class periods, trying to fit it in the, the, the regular one hour gives us a little bit of a larger window. It doesn't mean the instruction will happen the entire time, but the main key is that if you have first period uh, from nine to 9.50, that another period, another class period is not meeting at that time on Mondays to avoid um, a student having to be at two places at one moment. The teacher may or may not use that as a live session. Teachers can do various ways of presenting information, they can um, uh, do video uh, recordings and then post them. Uh, so they can have, uh, or they can do live sessions and, or they might do a quiz or a test during that period of time. But the main reason was to avoid the conflict. The reason we're starting first period at 9 a.m., we are noticing that students happen to get up a little bit later and we're trying to be uh, somewhat accommodating and, um, and then uh, as you can see on Friday, there's no live sessions really. It's more of an office hours schedule and then teachers will be rotating in and out of uh, meetings and then having office hours. And then it rotates through different times. 
So um, the reason we put a lunch period in there was just a, a time so that, that we can make sure that nothing was scheduled so that people can take a break. But on any given day, I don't expect that every period is gonna have a live session um, during their block of time. That is not the idea. And the idea is that they're not using that entire block of time. Some classes, as we get closer to like AP exams, that's possible that they might use that whole block of time, but not necessary, okay? So let me go back up. Okay, senior update. So we are working on uh, with the senior class. Um, I've been uh, the sponsor and the district, and someone's drawing on my screen. Um, uh, so we've been working with the district on trying to figure out, and the vendors trying to figure out how to um, to issue refunds to the various senior types of activities that now we cannot um, host. Uh, any in-person gatherings uh, through uh, the end of summer have been canceled per the district at this point in time. So we're trying to figure out ways to, to refund and to get items back to students like for their lockers or turn in their textbooks at the end of the year. Uh, so we'll be talking about that a little bit later. For seniors, um, we're looking at different ways to celebrate them. We'll be doing a series of um, uh, nominated a couple of students to be a part of the district's task force in um, uh, planning um, celebrations and, and, and whatnot. But know that uh, everything will be uh, virtual at this point. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. I would like to, one thing that we're working on right now with a vendor is to, if you've seen some signs around the neighborhoods, we're looking at getting these printed and, um, and sent out to uh, lawn signs to our seniors. Uh, the method and how we're going to get them out to seniors, we're still working on, um, but we would like to get these out to our seniors. So we're in the process of ordering them. And, and figuring out distribution. So we're very excited, very proud of our seniors. And it will look different than most years, but we're trying to think of different ways to celebrate and recognize our seniors. Um, device distribution, I'm very uh, proud of our team, which we have distributed about around 500 um, uh, Chromebooks to students from the 13th, the last day that we were actually on campus until um, even last week, we were able to get some devices out to students. We're encouraging stu uh, um, people to continue to use the help, the tapped help. Um, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's see. I would like to say we did have um, a, a PTO board meeting and the PTO graciously uh, has, um, has added uh, scholarships this year. I believe it's double what we've had in the past. So this, the different departments will be able to nominate students for additional scholarships. So we want to thank them for their contributions, knowing that it is a challenging year. Uh, they've been able to shift some resources to help uh, more families and students um, in, in these challenging times. So we appreciate that from them. Next, I'm going to have uh, pass the mic over to Mr. Loza to give us a couple of enrollment updates and tech support. Hi, good morning. Am I on? Yeah. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome. I just want to give you guys an update on the enrollment. As you guys know, about two thirds of our students. Uh, come to TAP, they live outside the attendance boundaries. This year, the district started doing something new. Uh, in prior years, if kids wanted to come to TAP, we used to have what is called open enrollment. We would do it in-house, and they would come to the school, fill out an application, and by this time, we would already send out enrollment packets to everyone. This year, we have to do it through the unified enrollment, something similar to, like, what the magnet used to do. So we had to follow their timelines. And I know it's been kind of frustrating for a lot of people because it's something new. The original deadline was ended back in November and we had to have a lottery. We had it in February. 
the people that, you know, we have 400 slots for freshmen and that might change. We had a lottery back in February. Those 400 people were told you've been accepted or you've been selected and they could accept or decline the offer depending on where else they applied. But a lot of people were put on the waiting list. The initial deadline for people to select was set by uh, for April 3rd and they extended it to last, uh, last Friday. And now they gave the, the parents uh, till Thursday to decide. So we're still contacting all the parents that were selected back in the lottery back in February. Starting on Thursday, we're gonna start calling people on the waiting list. And I know there's a lot of anxiety over that. What I tell parents is just be patient. We're gonna do our best to try to get everyone into Taft that wants to come into Taft. So starting probably today or tomorrow, all the people that have declined those slow open slots, we're gonna send an email to the parents that are on the waiting list, see if they wanna accept their, um, to attend Taft. So I know by the district controlling this, it has extended the deadline. And then once we get the, if you live in the attendance area, that information comes automatically to uh, Taft. It hasn't occurred yet. Once that happens, we'll send out a welcome letter and telling them what the process will be. So that's where we're at right now. I know there's a lot of anxiety. We're gonna try to move on the waiting list as soon as possible. That way, if you know anyone that's on the waiting list, hopefully by this week, you'll hear something from us. Also, if you know of any students that still wanna to come to Taft, and they don't live in the attendance area, they still have to go and apply through the options uh, program in LUSD. And there's a tab on our website where they can click on it and it'll take them to that website. Like I said, in the past, we would just do it all in house. Now it has to go through the district, okay? In regards to the tech support, we are asking all students to, or parents, if you, if, uh, you know your students are having difficulties, Go to the TAP website, there's the help uh, desk, fill it out. I know Mr. Hassan, if it's something technical, he'll respond to it and try to assist them. If it's in regards to uh, electronic devices, we are making contact individually with those students to try to make arrangements so they, they all have uh, the tools necessary to continue learning during this time. So that's pretty much that all I have. Uh, we'll take it to the next person. Okay, Miss Yu. Good morning. My name is Miss Yu. I'm the magnet. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Miss Yu, and I'm the magnet coordinator and the SAS coordinator. So, Mr. Um, Loza did cover some of the unified enrollment um, deadlines and so forth, which is exactly the same for the magnet and not the SAS. So, just to give you an idea, the magnet enrollment. The deadline was Friday, so we had about 30 open slots after the deadline. So currently we do have all waitlisted students contacted for um, uh, space availability. We do have about 129 open slots for the ninth grade and we have about 140 students still on the waiting list. So we're in pretty good shape of meeting our capacity. Uh, next year, we're anticipating adding on one more position for our capacity of about 460 students total from 9th through 12th grade. And um, right now, because of the in-person meetings that we normally have for our incoming freshmen and our parents, we will probably be doing a live Zoom or, or even something pre-taped like this one so that we can welcome our parents and go over all our descriptions and our course options and everything that we offer in the program as well. Um, for the essays application, we had to go to an online format just because we can't have the paper copies and hand it out as well as a lot of the schools are closed so they're not able to get any of the transcripts or any of the gifted verification forms signed. So currently, if you go to our website, we have put apply now icon on there for our special programs which include the SAS, the Humanitas, and also our AIET application that is on there. The official transcript and any documents that we will need, we posted that if they are LAUSD students, we will be accessing the records directly from our site. So 
parents do not need to worry about submitting anything. However, if they are a non-LAOC student, meaning they go to either an independent charter or a private school, then they are going to have to submit their transcripts of some type electronically to um, any of the three staff members who are in charge of those three special programs. Enrollment packet wise as well, if they're not LAUSD students, we're not requiring them because we're assuming we'll be able to transfer automatically their enrollment information. However, if they're not LAUSD students, once we get some clarifications from the district, we will either post the forms online or um, they may go to a uh, complete online format by LAUSD. So we're waiting for more description and some procedural information from LAUSD. But that's about it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Yu. Um, now we'll go to Ms. Oland. Ms. Oland's going to share us, uh, with us. Uh, she's the administrator, the assistant principal in charge of the academy. Hello. Uh, can you switch it to the next slide, please? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, a lot of the information is the same as what Ms. Yu just said for the SAS. Um, the students also need to apply by May 15th. The, the application for the academy is in the same place um, and the information will be received in the same way. Uh, but I wanted to let you know that the academy, a lot of people don't know what the program is. So for gifted students who um, need the challenges and credit of an honors program, it has the same sort of rigor, but with the benefit of supports, including built-in help and organization, work habits, <clears throat> and it breaks down assignments. The classes are smaller and there are multiple adults available in the room, three, to the small size of class. So there's a lot of support. So it's basically for students who can use supports but are still gifted. We'll also try to have a parent meeting and a student, new student and parent meeting in May, probably in late May. And that's all that I wanted to share. Couldn't find myself to unmute. Um, now I'll have Ms. McNabb uh, will uh, share a little of her updates. Good morning. So um, I know a lot of you who have students or who, if you are students in athletics, are a little frustrated. Um, at this point, it's all out of our control. As you should know at this point, all spring sports have been canceled um, in line with the stay at home order. At this time, there are no organized practices that should be being held um, for fall sports. So nothing going on in the summer. We are presently working with the state CIF office for guidance. Um, so when things change, because this is a very fluid situation, if things change in the state or with those sanctions, we will be in line with that and make um, adjustments accordingly. There is, I know one team, our track and field team, where the spirit packs have arrived. So right now we are working on a plan for distribution. We just have not finalized it. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have not finalized it yet. Um, as well, at the end of the school year, uh, uniforms that are owned by the district will need to be returned just as textbooks um, or fines will need to uh, be taken care of in order for students to get their transcripts and their diploma as in every year. It'll be a little more challenging again just because of the situation but we will have something in place and make that public to um, the students and all of the families. So Again, this is a fluid situation and we will keep you informed. We want to get our students back with their teammates. We want them to be able to uh, bond and keep those relationships going. But at this point, really, it's out, of our, it's out of our hands. But just know that we are working actively with the state um, offices to see what we can do to get our students back on the fields as soon as it is safe to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McNabb. Um, and now I'm going to have Mr. Tapia share with us some stuff from the counseling, the counseling office, and updates from them. Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, so next up will be Mr. Tapia. Thank you, Ms. McNabb. Good morning. So uh, 
as far as the grading dates, uh, just so, uh, so you keep track, is the 15-week re progress report will come out. Well, Mr. Tapia, you may need to unmute yourself. I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, the, um, the progress, re uh, progress report, the 15-week, is out on May 13th. Final grades are June 12th. So uh, in line with uh, Mr. Butner's order of uh, to hold the kids harmless, um, I just need to be upfront and say, yes, the grade after any, uh, the grade as of March 13th can only improve. So uh, however, we want to instill the importance of learning for learning's sake and uh, really convey that message to students especially if they already have straight A's, uh, shouldn't be an issue. However, what is important to note is that all students will, re receive, will receive a D on the final mark. Um, and if they receive a D, they will be automatically enrolled in summer school. Uh, so uh, just to repeat, I know that this question has come up quite a bit. The, no students will fail and all students will receive a D or higher. So as of March 13th, the grade can only improve. Uh, students in credit, credit recovery courses must finish the course. Anybody in Edgenuity, as of now, they must finish the course to receive credit. AP exams, uh, May 11th through May 26th. Uh, most students should have, should have received uh, emails through the College Board on instruction on how to do that. But if you have any further questions, please you can either contact me or Ms. Allison Young for specific questions or visit the College Board website. Um, AP teachers are conducting test prep sessions. You can uh, email the teacher directly to find out you know, what their schedule is for that. Um, also, you please be aware that counselors are currently monitoring and responding to the TAF support link on the website. We have been working with uh, our, our district partners uh, to help provide resources for mental health and other uh, resources such as food pantry information or any other issues that um, may present a challenge for students or even families. So please do not hesitate to contact me. I can forward the emails to the uh, appropriate counselor and um, the uh, and just to let you know that right now the counselors are all focusing on the seniors and graduation progress for them. Um, counselors are available to facilitate communication between teachers and parents and students. Uh, if you if you don't know who your child's counselor is, you can email me. I can definitely forward that information. And uh, this is where we are now. So thank you very much. I'm done. And you can also go to the Taft help desk um, if you, you know, uh, to get, and that will be filtered out to, to the appropriate counselor as well. Okay. Um, Ms. Aviv has some updates for us. Good morning, everyone. And I just miss seeing everybody's face. So thanks for at least meeting us online virtually. Just a few things. Um, this does not apply necessarily to all parents, but for those that have students with individualized education plans, known as IEPs, um, we are going to resume those meetings virtually via Zoom in the next few weeks. So be prepared to have um, either Ms. Otis, our uh, special education coordinator, who is online and she can wave, <laughs> and um, Sandy, as far as our, our clerk, either reaching out to you to set up those meetings. Your teachers will be participating in the same fashion we are. We'll be able to view the um, the IEP online, and you will be able to do e-signatures uh, for anything. Um, also, we just want to reassure that all of your case managers have been working with your teachers and the students have been getting their services, their extended time. I know that this is uh, new for everybody, but they've been working really, really hard around the clock to both uh, teach in the classroom as well as work with the teachers. And, and Ms. Otis, also you can always um, email her or myself. Um, so we can answer any questions or concerns specific. Um, I, this is a big question I get asked a lot about year-end news, even as a parent of a student with LUSD, I'm asking the same question. Um, how do we return textbooks? How do we return the technology? When do we do that? When do I get to go back and clean out my locker and get my personal items? And so that's been a big concern with everyone. 
So we will have a schedule. It will be towards the end of the school year in June and we'll announce it. We will respect social distancing rules. So there'll be a, a very staggered schedule that we just ask everybody does their best to adhere. So if you're ninth grade and you're A through D, please make every effort to come through your time because we have to respect those um, rules. And um, kind of like what we do in August with pre-registration, when you come get everything, we're gonna do this in June where you return everything. So please be patient with us. We will have plenty of announcements to make sure you're fully aware um, that that's gonna happen. And then in regards to events, as disappointing as they were that so many things had to be canceled and postponed this year, um, at this time, we will have the calendar for next school year updated by, the, by June when school's out. And we are tentatively scheduling everything as normal. So our hopes and our prayers is that everything will return come next school year. So please be on the lookout for all the events um, that will be posted. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, thank you, Ms. Aviv and everyone. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, having to, I'm going to entertain some questions that have already come up. And you can also use the chat um, box to ask your questions because we're going to go through because we have some some extra time to do that. I, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, let's see, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and stop recording.